Okay, welcome to On The Judy Podcast, and today we have... Bradley Bra- Hudson Adoy. <laughs> hey, he's introducing himself, get me? So, how you keeping, man? I can't complain, you know. Um, it's been a crazy year, with this pandemic, with everything that's going on. But we have to adjust, you know, and trust in God, and keep making it work. Yeah, I hear that, I hear that. Uh, let's not talk about the pandemic, because my views are a bit mad about it. <laughs> but, um, so... Let the people know, like, Bradley used to play football. Are you still a footballer or? No, it's past now. So I was a footballer, but now I'm a football agent. Who's your clients? I don't want to talk too much about my clients because it's private does, and does, confidential. Does, does one share your last name? Of course he does. You know, um, I, I'll let his name out. Callum hudson Adoy, my brother. Um, listen, he's done fantastically well. And we just keep hope, hope that he keeps going and keeps doing what he needs to do. I hear that. to get to where he needs to get to. Family being agents, a lot of people frown upon that because they they say that they don't have the player's best interest. How have you like tackled that? Especially at being at a big club like that. At yeah. little clubs, you might get away with it, but yeah, yeah. how have you tackled that at Chelsea? Do you know what it is, yeah? I think a lot of people have different perceptions about what goes on as an agent, how you're supposed to be as an agent, you know, and uh, families trying to get involved. Listen, I ain't gonna beat behind the bush. A lot of families wanna get involved yeah. for the wrong reasons, in a sense of they see it's a way of cashing out and making a lot of money for themselves. I hear that. You know? But for me, personally, it was more of a sense of that's my brother. You know, I got his best interest at heart. Um, I believe that all the experiences I've been through growing up, being around different agents, working in the agency industry under another agency you know, prepared me for obviously this moment to look mm. after my brother. So what have you experienced? Like you said, you've, you've had, the, obviously you've played Fulham, you've played at a decent level, you've yeah. played a decent amount of football. Um, you've had agents. What have they done that you've learned that you're not going to do? Like, let's talk about your experiences with agents. Definitely. Yeah. Look, there's a lot of agents that have, when I've tried to call them, they don't pick up the phone, you know, you know that I'm, as the player, itching to find out what's my next move. Yeah. Been released from a club. Can you help me? Yeah. But they don't pick up the phone. But, so, when you're playing, so when you're playing, they've got your club, when you're playing, do you, you still chat to your agent? I, I don't know, like, yeah. I'm sure a lot of people don't know. I, I think, look, some of the ones that, the so-called ones, their favourites that are doing well and are going to earn them big money, they're yeah. probably in constant dialogue with them. Okay. But the ones, obviously, that are not doing so well, you don't hear from them. Like, I'm not going to say that I wasn't doing well, but I heard from my agent when it was deal time, you know? Yeah. And I always said that when I get in the industry, or if I was ever in this position, I would correct that and make sure that I interact with my players on a daily basis. Well, I hear that, I hear that. And how do I word this? What benefits your family, you being agent or your family, yeah, you being agent, what benefits Callum and obviously your family apart from the thing on your wrist 30 on the wrist <laughs> <laughs> 3 million hours nah listen uh, I can't complain I think the benefits are that all jokes aside like you know um, we keep it real you know love is pure and first and foremost we make it happen you know like yeah. I'm going to go into a room with a Chelsea director for example and it ain't, you're not going to tell me or sit down with me and say this is going to happen that's going to happen I'm going to tell you what's going to happen because that's going to be what's right for my brother. If it's not right for my brother, then it's not going to happen. You know, I have his best interest at heart. You yeah. know, and as a family, first and foremost, we want him to be a successful footballer, you know? And if that's not the case, then, you know, we'll do, have to... Do you not think that comes across greedy? Do you know what? Yeah. It is what it is. Some people from the outside yeah. will think it's greed. But if you know me and you know my family and you know how we operate, we're not greedy. We're just trying to make it happen for him. But let me ask you a question, right? All right. This is a new one. <laughs> let me ask you a question. <laughs> Why yeah, should I let someone from the outside, right? Yeah. Come and take 
everything that my brother's built away from my family. You asking me that? I, I can't answer that because if uh, let me flip it like this: if I if you didn't play football, yeah, yeah, and you didn't come from your dad played football, you didn't come from a footballing family, yeah, then maybe you wouldn't you you would have let you know a Joe Bloggs look after your brother because sure. you know the game, yeah, yeah, then it's probably better. Correct. But I'm with you. Like yeah. if we're gonna break bread, me and my brother, yeah, let's break bread. I'm. You're you're gonna make money. I'm gonna make money. Get me three million on the house, as you say. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So it makes sense, man. It makes uh, sense. Li listen, like, don't get me wrong. Like, it has its benefits. You know, again, like you said, you know what we spent on the house. You know about the watches, the cars. You know what cars you got? <laughs> There's a fleet of cars. You know what I mean? <laughs> but um, the Bentley. You know, but I'm not gonna mention too much. But listen, I'm gonna give it to you, lot real, because I'm a real person. And listen, you're my people, and I've come on here to be real and. Let people know that in this game and in this industry, yeah, it's not always what you see from the outside. People are always different from the inside. And I'm going to let you a little bit into my lifestyle as well. Yeah. You know, we're not greedy people. We just know how to make business work. Yeah. And we've made it work so far. So can't complain. To be fair, I'll give you that because I've known you from school. Yeah. And you've always been a football guy. The money wasn't, not saying you, you was broke, but the money wasn't 100% there. Yeah, yeah. And you're still kind of the same person. Obviously, there's a hint uh, of arrogance, but not nah. <laughs> <laughs> not where you wouldn't come and have a chat with me, innit? Yeah. Like, and I respect that, which is which is good. And, and like I said, like a lot of people, again, from the outside, you might see me think, ah, oh, this guy's arrogant. This guy's this, this guy's that. But the people that need to know me and the people that need to know what I'm about, they know what I'm about. If I've got you, I've got you. It's not a problem. And what are you about? I me, mean, I'm just a guy living life enjoying you know and doing good business <laughs> <laughs> that's respectable all right let's talk about let's talk about you yeah um in school you was a fulham would you say wonder kid or like rising star oh special <laughs> <laughs> what nah, nah, listen i was i was a i was um yeah you could say i was a wonder kid you know um but let's even before then. Let's talk about how it started. I remember the days like with yeah. You 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 conduct you did yeah, you direct that in the yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is all you. I'm just here to ad lib. Yeah, definitely. Listen, um, it started even at the sports center, you know, in Battersea. Um, I wasn't really. I'm not sure. Like I wasn't really into football at the time that much. But obviously, my dad constantly, you know, is sometimes in the African household. If they're going somewhere, you're going Push with it, them, yeah. you know. And I used to go and watch him regularly and. I won't say he forced it upon me, but he made me go to sports center and then obviously got scouted from there to Fulham. And like I said, I went, I think I met you in school. Mm. I went on trial at Fulham and you're, you're not training with us. You're playing above. Yeah. So you're destined to make it yeah. for Fulham. Yeah. Why, why didn't that happen? Um, I think like along the journey, there's loads of different obstacles that you encounter. You know, um, I thought from a 12 year old, that everything was nailed on, that I was going to make it. Um, I was going to play in the Premier League. I was going to be a superstar, go to the World Cup, play for England or Ghana. Um, but people never, ever tell you, you know, what can happen in football. You know, mm. I think every kid that laces up their boots and goes into the academy, they think that they're going to make it. Um, so does every parent as well. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's a big thing because I think my family, myself, you know, used to go to parties, everyone goes, oh, there's the footballer, there's the footballer, you know, so. Talking about you or your dad? Both. <laughs> he loved the limelight as well, <laughs> do you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, we, we we all thought that it was nailed on, you know. But, of course, things happen um, in some people's eyes. Um, as I got closer to the first team, I wasn't the right fit for the club, um, which a club I'd been at since eight years old. Yeah. You know, you don't expect this day to happen. But obviously it did. And honestly, it was it was probably one of the saddest days in football for me. Yeah. But you know what? It's probably made me who I am today. So did did you have an agent then? Yeah, funny enough, I did. Um was he was he painting the dream or painting the picture that you're definitely gonna play at this club? Or did he keep it real? Do you know what? I think agents get gets um get inklings from people in, at the hierarchy in the club, everyone's got normally good relationships with their players who are in that club with the hierarchy. Mm. So I think he knew because 
He knew what? That you weren't, weren't going to weren't gonna get okay. another deal because I think when it came to the day, I was like to him, oh, I'm going in today to find out. The guy weren't picking up his phone. Even when I got the news. Who, your agent? Yeah, yeah. The guy didn't pick up the phone, you know, which I found was odd because beforehand, when I was doing other deals, this guy, three, four months, you know he's there. We're getting in, we're, we're, you know what I mean? Yeah. We're going to do a deal. So listen, he, went, he didn't pick up the phone. And then when I called him up, finally got through to him. He was like, oh, really? Like, I can't believe it, you know? But I could tell by his tone of voice that he'd already known what had gone on. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And he was just like, oh, you're going to have to keep your head and try and go again, you know? And he just fizzled out. Go again where? Surely he should, if he knew, he should have something lined up. Yeah. He left me, honestly. So yeah. where, what happened next? Um, I ended up going to Hereford. Um, okay. In League One, um, I went to the exit trials. I'd had like numerous different offers to go to different clubs at the time. So, but this woman, funny enough, who was at the club, Secretary Charlotte, brilliant woman, said, "Look, Brad, <laughs> you, <know, laughs> you should um, you should go to exit trials." And in my head, I was like, "I'm too good for exit trials. Yeah, like, I'm not going to that because everybody previously or prior to what had ha occurred with myself that I know was going to exit trials, I thought they're not good enough, like." Explain what exit trials because we might have some new listeners or like the yeah. new generation which is, it don't really exist anymore. So explain Definitely. what exit trial is. What exit trial is is, is um, a certain group of boys who've been at academies that have been released or let go by their clubs. And what they do is they do a three day sort of camp where they allow scouts to come down and watch the boys who've been um, released um, play in 11 aside games and then see if they're good enough for their club or something that they may want for their club. It's like so. an old school showcase game. Showcase games, yeah, yeah, in a nutshell. So, yeah, I went down there, <sighs> had an unbelievable performance in the games. <laughs> Shock. <laughs> 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 nah, I'm joking. I had a good performance and then like Hereford, Leeds, um, Oldham, I had quite a lot of clubs that were I remember interested. the Leeds shout. Do you remember? Yeah, I remember the Leeds shout. And I could have went to Leeds when I was at Hereford as well. When I ended up playing against them and doing my thing as well. Yeah. But things fell through again. And you know, like... Was I've, that agents again or...? Agents again. Like, honestly, you knew, you, I knew that they wanted me because I spoke to... Don't want to get anyone in trouble, but people, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, like, it, it's just greed. Like, it boils down to, oh, no, you need to stay here. You need to do this. You need to do that. And so many things that happened even then... Again, you still see it in this day and age in football as well. People trying to freeze players out to lift up their pocket. You know? Agents are? Agents, yeah, certain agents. Okay. I yeah. didn't even know that. So what, yeah. you saying that an agent will stop, so a club, if an agent's got a good relationship, let's say your agent had a good relationship with Hereford, yeah. but you could potentially go to Leeds, mm -hmm. they would stop that. So Hereford, weigh him in. 100%. Like, I'm not here to degrade or to shed light on any other agents. Because listen, there's a lot of agents out there that's doing it the right way. Yeah. And there's some agents that's, you know, been known notoriously for years for corrupt ways, you know, to put it at best. Um, and to answer your question, of course, it's even happened with probably um, someone very, very local that a lot of people are familiar with where an agent could move the player, but him and the club block the player they forced the player to sign a new contract and all of a sudden the agent's laughing with a lot of money in his back pocket. <laughs> and the player's, and the player's playing... stuck on a deal, do you know what I mean? Being told that, oh, don't worry, next window you can get out, but you've signed a four or five year contract. And you know? you're playing with the kids, not with the first team. Exactly. That's so mad. So after Hereford, mm -hmm. where to next? Hungry, I think it was. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> things got that bad. Oh, mate, listen. I was, I was six months without getting paid, mate. In Hungary? In Hungary, pal. Honestly, I was in Hungary, um, <laughs> six months, foreign country, didn't know anybody. Um, thought it was an unbelievable experience at the time, but then <laughs> the, harsh, the harsh reality is when you realise you're not getting paid and everyone doesn't speak the language. All of a sudden, everyone speaks English when you're training. <laughs> but when it's payday, nobody can speak the language. Everyone's pointing at different people as well. God, so this like, is the stuff. Do you know what I mean? But I'll tell you a funny story about that. So I got six months down the line, yeah? And this so, there was two kit men. But all the time, this kit man, yeah, would always wear a suit. Baffle me. Like, why is this guy wearing a suit but doesn't talk too much? The other kit man's the one handing out all the kit yeah. and stuff. This other kit man 
never ever handed out the suit, um, the out the kits. Yeah. But it was always in a suit or it looked sharp. <laughs> Thinking, this is crazy. But you know, you don't think nothing of it. You just think like, he's the boss of that one. Yeah, it? yeah. What it turned out to be was the president with the cash was the other guy who was supposed to be the kit man. Okay. No one had ever known who the president was. So they said. <laughs> yeah. So people were getting paid in the slide of local players, but the players who were coming from abroad, the they weren't money. getting paid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the way they did it as well was, it was a bit messed up was they had two contracts. So one contract was for like, say for example, 200 pound a week. And then another side contract was worth like a thousand pound a week. Yeah. Or yeah. a thousand euros a week. Yeah. The Hungarian FA, <laughs> bro, honestly, no jokes, <laughs> only saw the £200 a week contract. So when they looked at it, yeah, and the lump sum that they'd already paid you, the club had already paid me, it added up to that £200 a week. So they didn't have to pay They don't you. have to pay me. So they were like, what are you talking about? <laughs> so then they've gone to me, <laughs> they've gone to me, oh, where's the contract? I've gone, I've got the contract. Show me the contract. So this is my locker. Gone to my locker. No oh, contract. Oh, no, wait. <laughs> How busy are you? You bought your contract and put it in your locker. Bro, the contract, obviously I'm in Hungary, innit? Yeah. So like... So are you walking around with your contract every day? <laughs> nah, 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 nah. The contract, the contract literally... God, bro, is it Hungarian? I didn't have a clue. Oh, all, I, all I do... So, wait, wait, who took you out there? Listen, this random agent from Belgium. <laughs> <laughs> so random agent. Basically, we had two people. There was myself and a guy called Yinka Kasal, yeah, <laughs> from Nigeria. <laughs> I should have known the 419 was going to happen. Nah, I'm joking. Um, nah, joking, I'm joking. Love to all the Nigerians. Um, all jokes aside, like this Belgian guy who took me out there, right? Yeah. Like, he, he was very, very comfortable because he, he done the deal, yeah? And like, this guy was out so quickly. Like, yeah, when I was getting there, you're gonna stay here, you're gonna get this, look at the stadium. Bro, he must've got paid his money or whatever, Bounce. yeah. Bounced, couldn't get through to him again. So, but, you're, so you're in deep hungry. Deep with a, hungry, With a foreign face. contract. Yep. In a foreign language. Yeah. You're my guy, bro. We've we done it from school. You know, you've seen the highs, and the lows, you know, like we went to school one day. You remember, like you said, even off camera, black shirt, green tie. <laughs> it was wearing a white tie, a like, white shirt. I don't know what I was doing, honestly. But even those times, yeah, you know, like when you're young, you're just gassed up in it. Like, especially in school, because me and you were in the same football team. Yeah. We're kicking it. Everyone's buzzing about us and talking about us. So, and I thought I was that guy. You know? To be fair, I'll give it to you. You were that guy. Like mm. you was the only one that played. Fulham was a big club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From South London, whoever played for Fulham was destined to make. You used to walk around, and I think even the teachers knew. Yeah, he was yeah, gonna yeah. make it in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely got away with but a lot. Let me ask you something. Yeah, yeah. You dabbled in the roads a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Not saying you went in fully, you, but you still had the football mentality, mm. and that I think that saved you from going too deep. Mm. But did you take that road attitude? Into onto the f into the football scene. I think like you know when you're younger, right? You got peers that you kick it with, yeah. Yeah. And some people are like you said. I was fortunate enough to be at Fulham, but there's other people who were playing like Sunday league football, but they were in and around that road sort of lifestyle, you know. And I think as any young person and young kid, when you're close with people like that, it's a bit exciting because all I've known as an eight-year-old is structure. Three times a week training, on a Sunday, I've got a game. Yeah. When that person's telling me a story about they went out, cinema, linked to girls or whatever, on that, on that Friday or that Saturday, bro, I have to be in bed at eight. Do you know what I mean? Because <laughs> yeah. I know I've got a game the next day. Yeah. You know? And... um. Yeah, like, I think I got excited a bit. Like, I wanted to see that thing. Because obviously, as a kid, like, you're hearing all these stories and girls and you're at that sort of age as well. Yeah. You're like, let me get involved. And, like. and the thing is, at our school, the whole football team, <laughs> bar the couple that was at clubs, dabbled in that stuff. So you're 100%. hearing it at lunchtime, break time, yeah, yeah. on a coach journeys to games. So yeah, 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 yeah. it's understandable. Yeah. Um, So Hungary's out of the way. You finally get back. Yeah. And then you smash out non-league. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk us, talk us through your non-league journey. Yeah, my non-league journey was kind of strange. I think I went to, um, I, got, I think I went Grays or Histon, one of those two clubs. 
But I remember the Histon one, bro. These times, like, again, and it's funny how life works, right? Because I remember this guy said he's going to pay me £500 a week. What, his, one of the two, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at Histon, £500 a week. And you know those times, like, I'm like, boy, £500 a week, <laughs> I'm dead, bro. I haven't even looked at the map where Histon is. I don't know where yeah. Histon is, bro, but I'm like, me? What, five bills? I'm there. Guy even, I think he sent the contract over, I signed it. And then they scanned it back because I needed to hand it in by a certain time <laughs> yeah. to get there, innit? So you can play on the Saturday. So I can play yeah. on the Saturday. Bro, funny story. He said, yeah, I bought your train ticket. I said, cool. Bro, I'm thinking I'm going to like North London or something. <laughs> <laughs> I told oh, you, you weren't yeah. the brightest. <laughs> I told you. I was money hungry, bro. I was money hungry. <laughs> um, I get on, the, get, on the, get on the train now from King's Cross. I'm going like, I think it is. What was it? No, oh, it's um, and it's King's Cambridge. Cross. It's the Cambridge one. Yeah. King's Cross, gone to some next station in North London, yeah. But I'm thinking it's stopping there, innit? Yeah. Bro, the thing's carried on going. <laughs> I've seen this thing's going now, going and going. I'm like, nah, where are we going? Like, I'm, I think I've got the wrong stop in it, <laughs> bro. Phone at the guy, he said, nah, don't worry, get off at Cambridge, we'll pick you up. Get to Cambridge, then it's still like another, what, 30 minutes yeah, from Cambridge? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Takes me to one random holiday inn <laughs> off the corner, yeah. It's somewhere in his dead. I said, oh, yeah, you're here for the night, we'll pick you up in the morning for the game. Honestly, bro. I couldn't believe it. So imagine this, from Wimbledon, I was commuting yeah. twice a week to Histon and then on game day to Histon. And what, then all over, all the, over the country, the country yeah. in it and stuff. Mental. But that's normal now. Like, that, what was that, conference? Conference, yeah. Yeah, yeah but yeah. that's normal, isn't it? That's, obviously, conference then wasn't probably as big as it is now yeah. and the clubs weren't as good. But if you think about it then, yeah. would you have taken it serious? If you knew then that you was playing conference at that age, earning £500 a week, would you have taken it serious? Probably, but you know what? I just think the logistics were so bad for me. You know, I weren't driving. Yeah. I was I was getting a train, coming back at crazy hours. Like, had to leave training without showering to rush to, <laughs> to get, get the, train. Back, get the yeah. train to get home. Uh, get home, it's like midnight, past midnight. And I'm thinking like, this is crazy. So my head's already not in the football, Yeah, you know? So something that I've built up all my life to get to, I faced my first proper adversity. I'm now in the conference. And you've heard, I've heard, do you know what it is? I'd heard all these stories from the senior players in that team about, bro, you're too good to be here. This is my story. I had that sort of journey. Yeah. Don't fall into the trap. But one way or another, I ended up falling into that trap. Chasing the money. And chasing the money, you know? Yeah. And um, like, listen, my... I, I genuinely think personally on the personal, and it's raw, I'll say it on camera, I think in my football career, I could have gone a lot further and done a lot better, you know? But listen, it's life, in it, you know? Mm. You can't live for regrets sometimes. You just got to just keep on in it and just keep, you know, let the young ones now have their, <laughs> have their shine. Let's talk about that. Not saying you messed up your career because you played professional, you played, earned a decent amount of money. Yeah, Not, yeah. Obviously, <laughs> what you've got now dwarfs what you've heard in are we gonna, total. Are we, wait, is this interview all about the check now no 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 no, <laughs> no, 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 no. what advice do you give your little brother um, before before he blew yeah what advice were you giving your little brother just the hunger focus um, it's like I was a sacrifice lamb this is what me and my dad and my mum always say internally like remember I was their first child that was playing football so then we got the opportunity to do it again. Yeah. Every mistake I made, I wasn't going to let him make. He's going to find himself. He's a man. Like, he's going to want to venture into certain things. Yeah. And have to learn in his time and in his way. But personally for myself, I was always trying to steer him clear of the roads or... Yeah. Which is understandable. Or to wait gift. Put him in a private school. Perfect. Get him the best education possibly that we can get him. You know, make sure you had the boots still at 12 years old. Do you know what I mean? Like, if you wanted to stay up and watch WWE wrestling, I would record it so you could watch it after training. Do yeah. you know what I mean? You yeah. know, things like that. Because they were the things that I wanted. But obviously in our time, we probably didn't have that technology. So I was just always, anything that I ever wanted to do, I knew that I had done, all the mistakes I had done, always trying to protect him from that. When did you, when did you think, when did it click that, yeah, he's the truth? 
because at the younger, I was to say what, 12s, 13s, mm. like everyone's good and all they yeah, fizzle yeah. out. But his Gen- talent just rose. I but always, when did it click and think he's I, the truth? I think, to be honest with you, bro, I always knew. I always knew, man. Like there was things he was doing. Take the academy away. When we was in like, in Collier's Wood, there's a park called Cavendish Park, for those who don't know. Um, and the things he was doing, like it was just mind boggling. You just look at him and think, how's he doing that? Like, you'll do one, two tricks. And you know, in your head, like, you're like, that's my little brother. Like, I want to try and do that. Like, I won't do it then because I didn't embarrass myself. <laughs> but I'll try and do it and I can't even do it. And I'm like, no, this guy is ridiculous. Technically, left foot, right foot, but his temperament, he's so calm on the ball. And then you think, all right, cool. Maybe it's against people in the park. Because you know, the people in the park, they're triers, they want to work yeah, hard, yeah. but some of them ain't great. Yeah. Then you can see him do it at academy level. His age dominate too easy. Play up, dominate too easy. Go up again, dominate too easy. The only thing they worry about is, okay, we don't want to push him too high because obviously the physical aspect of it, yeah. you know, in case you don't want him to get injured or hurt. But listen, 14, 15, I knew. It's only a matter of time, you know? And I knew, I knew God's my witness, he would be the one that would break into that Chelsea first team. Before the Frank Lampard revolution, it's yeah. been fantastic for all the academy boys. Yeah. What people forget is we broke through under an Italian manager. Whereas everyone else was getting loaned out. Yep. How how did you how did he manage to miss that loan? Because there's been some great players yeah. that have been shipped out and spent the rest of their career on loan. How has he managed to miss that? Do you know what I mean? When you've got good people behind you, <laughs> you know, and you make smart moves. Do you know what I mean? Then then and listen, it's, 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 I wouldn't big up myself and my dad and everything, but my mom, people behind him. But do you know what it is? It's just his talent has got him to where he's got to, and his ability and his determination. But do you know what it is? I think it's easy to happen to go out on loan, but sometimes as well. And this brings me back to what you were saying about agents and family members. I was so close to the situation with my father that we were like, he's never going to go on loan. Yeah, he's good enough to play for this football club. If you don't believe it, we'll go somewhere else. Then then... Yeah, maybe it's not the right club for him. Give him a chance. We'll do what he's doing. Gave him a chance against Perth Glory in his debut in Australia. Performed, you know. Yeah, and then kept on going and kept on going. Unfortunately, obviously, he got his injury, and now he's he's yeah, back, but he, ready flying back with a bang, back it? with a bang, you know. So, but how do you separate the brother and agent role? Do you know what? Me, me and him are like, I'm like a big kid already. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? You know me, bro. So when I'm with him, it's, it's at the house, just table tennis, basketball. Um, Which house is this? Huh? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Listen, at, at, at the, um, nah, we've got everything there, man. Basketball, <laughs> table tennis, football tennis, gym built in. You know what I mean? Like. Must be nice. Oh, I can't complain. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you can't see your membership, your David Lloyd membership. 100%, mate. Listen, that, that's on ice. No, no, no. Listen. What, what, what with the rest of the jewels? Oh, this one. <laughs> this is, you know, brought this one out, innit? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, f- thanks, man. I'm, time. I'm blind, but yeah. You sure? Really? I've got my shades in the car, but yeah? it's cool, yeah. Maybe you want to bring them on. <laughs> you know what I mean? It does this to people. Nah, um, no, nah, like I said, man, he comes, we kick it, we're brothers, we get banter. Same way, like me and you can sit down and banter, yeah. me and him, we just banter. I try not to talk about football too much, man. Because this, you know that's I mean? work, innit? We get too much yeah. into business. So yeah. when we're at the house, like, don't go in my office. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, 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 sorry. This guy's got a lot no, of I'm just, I'm just calculating I'm how many rooms you've mentioned. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you've Listen, come a long way from that black <laughs> shirt, you know. Eight hey, bathrooms. Hey, I'm telling uh, you. Well, how many bathrooms? Eight. Hey, but you know, all one suite, yeah. Um, but like I said, you know me. Only you're the only person, and this platform, which I'll big up every time, is the only platform that I'll sit in front of. I've had numerous amount of journalists and press people wanting me to come and sit down and do a face to face interview, but I always refuse it, you know, because at the end of the day, I don't want to take the light off my clients or my yeah. brother as well. So yeah. But for you guys, to sit down, come. It's normal, give, man. It's, it's all normal. love. It's, no, it's, it's not. Do you love. know what? This is we're just having a chat in it. Exactly. Like, like people want to know who the man behind Caltech the brand is. Mm. Is he going to be a brand? Yeah. 
Something's really cooking. Yeah? Really cooking. How long has it been cooking for with Car? You, know you see what? the other players, they're they're out there doing bits Tranky, and man. you know, like on the socials and that and Do you know what it is, yeah? Is a lot of these people are out doing and bigging themselves up on the social, but it never it never lasts. Big up to um I think Zaha's one is is it long life or live? Long live. Long live. He's doing his thing. That that's quite good. I like that one. But we got something coming. You know, and it's again like I'm not here for the short term. I'm here for longevity. So, my one and Kyle's one. Uh, you know, I'm not talking about clothing, bro. I'm talking about are we gonna see Caltech ten, Caltech nine, whatever? Like, is he gonna be like a CR seven? Is that what you're? Oh yeah, is... yeah, 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 yeah. It's coming, man. He's only what people forget is he's only twenty years old. Just turned, you know. But like, like for you to mention him with it, with it, with the likes of CR seven and because that's that. a, no, but that's the next that's the next thing for for footballers. They're not just 100%. footballers. They're 100%. you look at American footballers. Mm -hmm. They're on cereal boxes. They're everywhere, yeah, passes yeah. everywhere. And obviously Ronaldo and Messi are da da yeah, da. da, da. Yeah. But for someone with his talent, he's getting put in the top ten youngsters in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. So a bit becoming a brand should be the next thing. So you need to chat to, to Adidas or nah, listen, whoever and we're get that be, sorted. We're going to be global with Adidas. We've got a big beat still. Um, shout out D&G as well. We're doing business with now as well. There's a loads of different stuff that we're, we're doing that's big. But again, it's all about timing because at the end of the day right now, we need to cement our place again back on the pitch, get consistent football, yeah. let our feet talk for itself. Then you'll see everything that will flow with it. One other thing. So mm. you're talking about getting him back onto the pitch. Mm. He plays, he doesn't play. He plays, when he plays, he does well. Mm. Is there like, when you when he comes back and he says, oh, the gaffer told me to do this and this and this. Are you, do you go into brother mode or do you go into agent mode? Good question. Um, I think I go into both. It depends on where we're at. You know, it depends. Like I would only go into agent mode if I think, do you know what? It's really, really starting to affect you. You know? Yeah. The inconsistency. You know? Of not playing, being in, being out, being in, being out. Then that's a different conversation. But most of the time, it's just, you know what? Bro, go do your thing. <laughs> and, just, and just crack on again, like, do you know what I mean? Unless he asks me, then there's no need for me to put pressure on the situation. Because again, like, this day and age, what people always forget is this. Every social media person that's on their Twitter, we call them Twitter fingers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hiding behind screens, writing certain comments, you know. Um, these people see that. Young players see that. So don't forget. So say, for example, just saying what you're saying, he's not played well, right? Yeah. And he's not in the team the next game. I can't then jump on his back. I can speak to him and give him constructive criticism. Yeah. But I'm not going to jump on his back because... You've got 100,000 people who are writing Trolls on Twitter, stuff, yeah. stuff this, this, that. Don't get me wrong. When it's nice and you're doing well, it's great. But you've always got someone hiding behind the screen saying, oh, but this person's overrated or this person's this or this person's of that. Of course, yeah. Do you know what I mean? But it's, the social world is powerful as well because it has a knock-on effect to a lot of young players, you know? And yeah. we've, we've, we've cut that out now, so... But why aren't you on socials? Like, you could... You could be the agent who has the voice that says, I've been there, done it. You know, follow this path. Because do you know what it is, yeah? And a lot of people ask me that question. For me, I'm happy to be the man behind the scenes. I'm happy to be making it happen, making it click. And... Cashing a check. <laughs> it can't conflate, does it? <laughs> but, you know, like, honestly, bro, like, for me, I've had my time. This is their time. Let them be the bright spots. Let them be the ones that are getting all the good press and doing what they need to do. It's their time. I don't need to talk too much. Mm. Behind the scenes, when things are happening, deals, moves, brand deals, whatever. People, if you know, you know. You know? Yeah. That's it. That's how I stay, man. Um, What sort of advice, yeah? I'm going to ask you to give advice to three different groups of people. <laughs> what advice do you give to up and coming? Oh, people that want to become agents? 
Uh, be real because it's a ruthless game. No, I'm, listen, I'm so always be real. real. I'm always real, man. That hurts that you're saying it because I'm always. No, real. no, I just want you to. I want people to know in it like it's coming from 100% cloth, from the heart. Yeah, yeah. I would say if you're an up and coming agent, young, do your due diligence. Don't try and cheat. Rome wasn't built in a day, right? There's a lot of good salesmen out there, but they don't really know what they're doing when it comes to structuring a contract. Yeah. Do your research. Study it, learn it, even go and if you have to, do an apprenticeship with an agency. Is that what you've done? Yeah, I went for like, I think it was like two and a half years, three years to a company. Learn every day, looking at contracts, seeing what it is, asking everything, just like a sponge. Yeah. Taking everything in, because I knew the end game for me. Yeah. But obviously, there's a lot of other young youngsters coming up, like you're saying, who are aspiring to do it, that think, oh, look at this person. They've got a big watch. They've got a fast car. They've got a big house. They, they've got this client. They've got that client. Yeah. You know, I can make so much money. It doesn't work like that. There's people who've done this for 15 years that haven't made a lot of money. You've got old agents even now coming, talking, saying, oh, you know, the new agents that do it, they this and they're that. But my thing is this, I respect it, but you've had your time. Yeah. And you're still involved. So something's not adding up. And you still only got League One players. Do you see what I mean? <laughs> but then, but then, you're quick to throw everybody under the same brush. But if you're all hunky dory and everything's all good in your lane, why why are you still even being an agent? Like you're you're fifty, sixty odd now. Retire, hang it up, and advise. Money must not be right, innit? Exactly, and and don't criticize. Help them. Don't publicly come out and try to destroy younger agents who's trying to do it. You know, help them. Yeah. You know, and that's a big thing <coughs> because Stella, all these other big companies, irrespective, I think highly of certain people, but irrespective of my opinion and of other agents, right? I'm not going to come out and outright criticize them. Yeah. Because we work in the same field. Yeah. But you've got people, again, like I said, going out and talking and saying this and that about young agents, saying this and that about they're not doing it the right way, they're this, they're that. Look, mate, stay in your lane. But there is no out and out right way to be an agent. It's You just got to go with the flow, in it? Like, 100%. So when, I, when I, I do hear these things, I just no, think, oh, there, mate. Do you know why there is a right way as well, though? Me personally, be transparent. Real people recognise real people. And the difference is, if you're always trying to nick a tenner here, nick a hundred grand here, or nick a thousand pounds here, you're going to get found out in the end. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And this is why they all, you all hear them go into it and you, within like a year, they've quit or something or they've left that agency because this per, it's this person's fault and it's that person's fault. You always hear it, honestly. Yeah. <coughs> and um, yeah, but like I said, anyone who's young, like you said, to answer your question, who wants to do it, do your due diligence, do your research, um, and do it the right way, man. And there's an opportunity. I'm not saying you're going to be the next Bradley Hudson as well, <laughs> <laughs> or the next Rayola or the next this person. But listen, you've got an opportunity. You're something to aim for, innit? And yeah, that, that is not, not before, no one wanted to be an agent or yeah. no one knew anything about it. Now it's the next best thing, innit? Do you know what it is, bro? Like, and I'm obviously not here to talk too much, but a lot of these agents, yeah, and I'm even talking about people from my so-called neighbourhood. Right, from before, right? They make it look like it's harder than it is. Do you know what I mean? Explain. In a sense of, it's the dark side. It's so-called the dark side. Ah, oh, this is complicated. This still looks like that. Oh, so hard to do. Like, they've always tried to steer people, people away, away from trying to do it. Okay. But obviously now it's opened up and it's, you're an intermediary. Now p parents... Some people, look, don't get me wrong, like we said, some people are doing it for the greed, but some people actually, are, there's a lot of smart, intelligent people out there yeah. that now understand and dissect contracts. And don't forget, if you've got a good sports lawyer that understands law and understands wording and can translate what you're saying into paperwork, all of a sudden you can rock and roll. Yeah. And then it comes down to how do you negotiate? You know? And if you've had an experience in sales or whatever, you know, Maybe it comes natural, you know? So I don't want to discourage no one. Any young person that wants to do it, 
go out and do it, man. Fair play. Um, the next one. Yeah. What advice, being an, an ex-footballer, what advice do you give young footballers coming up? My advice for young footballers coming up is stay focused. It's a long road. There's plenty of distraction along the way. Um, Rome wasn't built in a day, be patient. You know? Um, the cream always rises to the top and your time will come. If it's not right there, it might be right over there. Yeah. You know, but just stay patient, stay focused, keep working hard, keep wanting to be the best at what you do. And as long as you're focused, you've got an opportunity, you know? God willing. Okay, lastly, what advice do you give family members who have a young, very talented footballer in their midst? Stay strong. Um, don't think and think that your life depends on it and your life counts on it. Stay strong. Um, keep giving them the right advice. Um, and don't sell yourself out because a lot of families, yeah, because of, unfortunately, they've come from a, a background where annually they don't earn a lot of money, right? When somebody throws a big check at their faces, they're quick to take the check. Yeah. And then it's basically like they sold their soul and you've got such an asset there that's probably worth 10 times more than that. You know, stay, that's why I say stay strong, you know, because there's going to be a lot of people that are going to try and entice you with money, with um, a house and different stuff, you know, to take your asset. If you know how good the asset is, believe in the asset, stay focused, stay strong and just keep believing in them. Should they trust an agent? Yes, they should. So if an agent came across who's not, who's outside the family. So if you wasn't a footballing person, would you have trusted an agent to um, come in and look after your asset? If I wasn't a fo footballing person? <laughs> yeah. If you didn't come from a footballing family and I you were think, clueless about the game? I think I would have had to. And listen, I'd be shooting myself in the foot if I said for someone not to trust an agent. Because don't forget, Callumson is one client. It's my brother. Okay. But I have numerous amount of clients. Okay, what? Well, Higher than Callum or up and coming? Up and coming. Okay. You know. I right, I got something I want to ask you. Yeah. When that first big deal happened, so he's blown up. Come from youth team. Yeah. He's blown up. He's now part of the Sari squad. Yeah. You get a fee. What do you do with your first? What would you do? What did you do with your first? You know, when it when it cashed. I'm not gonna say. I'm not gonna say figures unless you want to. What did you do with your first little paycheck? First paycheck, made sure everything was all cleaned up, taxes, everything, VAT. <laughs> then, no, honestly, first thing, mum, dad, you good? Good how? Financially, you good? Yeah. Good. Good? Good. Let's pay off that mortgage. Pay off that mortgage. They're Gucci now. Yeah. So then, okay. No problems. Now it's time to look after. Let's look after Bradley and the family. BHO. BHO. <laughs> so I can't buy one house. Where was that? I'm not going to say ah, the destination. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, but, sorry. No, it's cool. It's a nice little house, like four bedroom, three floors. Um, it's clean. How much? Know? I'm not going to say the figures, <laughs> but it, it, was, it, it was closer to the milli mark, but not that much. First one, a little tranquilo, you know? Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't live there no more. You just said eight, you doubled up. Oh, listen, we, we went again, innit? <laughs> we went again. Is, that off, is that off another cow deal or your other clients? Listen, <laughs> there's deals that's been done, innit? You know what I mean? Not to talk too much, but yeah, listen. Now, talk some stuff, man. Nah. Because, no, let's, let's be at it. Because clients, you know, people, like you say, people think agents are just money hungry people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've shown you've had to graft to get to where you are. Yeah. So be, flaunt it. Talk, talk some no, stuff. Do, do you know what it is? Because show, show, show the young aspiring agents yeah. what, what they can get to. You don't have to be the footballer. You do, could be do you know the man is? behind the scenes. Do you know what it is? I'm not arrogant, but I'm confident and I'm comfortable. Yeah? Now, I'll tell you this. It's not about floating it. Yeah? It's about inspiring. Because in our generation right now, there's a lot of people that flaunt it, but when you look at it, there's nothing sitting in that bank account. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And a lot of people like to do the show pony thing, but they're not doing the right things. They're not building the right infrastructure 
for the next generation. I'm a big, I'm a big person on generational wealth. But see that what you just said, that's this generation now. Mm -hmm. You see it all over, probably not, probably why you're not on socials, but all mm. over socials, people will wear the, what jacket's that? <laughs> wear the double G's, the yeah. Fendi t-shirt, get the Rolexes, but they're still eating beans on toast, isn't it? about the Dior's, bro. Not to yeah, but the table's in the way, isn't it? Nah, I'll get it out for you. <laughs> no, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm joking. But joking. I'm just saying that, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're still eating beans on toast, isn't it? So, and what I'm saying to you, flaunt it, yeah. is show the people that you don't have to be a footballer. Yeah. To, you can look after football and live like a footballer. Do you know what I'm saying? 100% you can. And like, that, that, that's the thing, like, I want to inspire the next generation, you know? That's a big, big reason why I came on here, to inspire the next generation, to show them, look, I found a way to make it. I found a way to, to build my stuff. You lot all can do it as well. Whether it's being a football agent, whether it's being a footballer, doing something within the footballing industry, you know? I came from, I'm not going to say a poverty-stricken background, because I didn't. Mm. My mum always was working and done well for me. Mm. So I would never say that. But I came from humble beginnings to get to where I got to. So this is to anybody, young and inspiring, looking to try and achieve something. Stay focused and you can achieve your dreams. You know? Yeah. Is is it hard though? Like being an agent, like read going into meetings. Do you, have you uh, have you ever been in a meeting and thought, oh, I'm a bit intimidated here? Like, what if I say the wrong things? Never. But how do you get to that point where you think, nah, I'm gonna lead this? Like Control when I it. first when I yeah, how did I when I first started doing this, yeah. it was a bit shaky and now I've learned to do that. So how did you learn, you know, to do the right deals and say the right stuff. Do you know, of course, that comes with experience. Like I said, like I did two to three years, yeah, with um, an agency where I was basically shadowing. So he would go into meetings and do deals. And I was obviously looking at the way he approached it, the, um, the meetings, looking at the, the dialogue within the meetings. And I think that built me for the time when it was my time to go in and do what I needed to do, obviously, as a full intermediary agent. So. How did how how did you stop them from poaching your brother or saying you can't come on board and, unless we have your brother on the books? Because it was all element of control, you know. Again, where you thought I wasn't the brightest, <laughs> this boy became bright, <laughs> you know. And I, I, I listen. Sometimes, when you have an asset, you can dangle the carrot, but you've got to be smart. As long as no one's controlling the carrot and you're always in full control of the carrot, yeah. You're good. And the carrot was always dangled. I'll be honest and open, I don't care. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But the kangaroo, carrot was always dangled, but I always made sure, did my due diligence, learnt. It was there, but when it was time to go, it was time to go. Come cow, we go and do our thing. Better, you better. Um, let's talk about friends. Like, you've now got money. Yeah. And tell uh, the world. <laughs> show the world. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of your friends probably are still living the same way that we they did when we was in school or whatever. And yeah, yeah. you know, they become adults nine to fives. How has your wealth affected your friendships? <laughs> or even not, even not just you, like your brother being who he is. Yeah. People, you must have your friends like message you, da 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 da. Yeah, listen, there's a there's a lot of people, you know. Um, that know that of course we've made a lot of money and there's a lot of people that I've been around me from day one I will never turn my back on like I, no matter what as much as I banter I show them the lifestyle talk about the houses the cars you know the holidays do you know what I mean as much <laughs> as I talk about it because I love it do you know what I mean why yeah. not because you know what all jokes aside I'm living my dream and my best life but I've got a good heart. So if someone come and approaches me and says, oh, they need this and that, I'm always going to try and find a way to make it happen for them. But sometimes, obviously, what I've noticed, people now, like, certain groups want to try and take your kindness for weakness. And I think there's sometimes in a certain expectancy level of I owe you, you know? Yeah. Because I've acquired certain wealth, a certain wealth. You feel now... I must look after you. I must give you this. I must, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And the world doesn't work like that, you know? Because nothing was handed to me as much as my so-called haters or 
I don't think I don't know if I've got haters or whatever, but like people who want to talk or you know what it is. Yeah, the old school agents. Old school, yeah. Like, listen, as much as they want to talk, at the end of the day, I grafted my way to get to where I get to. We did it our way. You know? Yeah. We've probably, I would say, in the most humble of, of ways, showed the way for families to do it. You know? I disagree. Neymar's dad or Neymar's people, but, Messi's Messi's parents. All right. But what but, but, you, but what you're talking about is you're talking about Neymar. I give you that. You're talking about Messi. I give you that. But I'm relating to people in my section, in London, in South London. That's who I'm relating to. Because that's my people. Better. Better. You know? Yeah, I hear that. So and my people, they're at the Fulham's, the Chelsea's, the Arsenal's. I'm showing them you can do it too. Because I don't know what Neymar had beforehand. Mm. I don't know what Messi had that had beforehand. But I know what I had. You know, so we had to work for it. Yeah. And there's people who probably in the same position as myself and my mum and my dad and my brother when we were, my sister, when we were growing up, we weren't poverty, like I said. We were okay. But there's people who was probably less off even now. Yeah. And they can relate to us. That's why I think a lot of people, we have a lot of love. I'm not stupid. Not everybody likes us. You're going to have a lot of haters in life. It's normal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But people can relate to us because they see themselves as that Callum. That brother might see themselves as that Bradley. Yeah. You know? So just inspire, man. No, I hear that. Do you, do you see people, obviously you spend a lot of time with your brother. Mm. Do you see a lot of people like, uh, not leeching, but you know, getting closer and closer who weren't there when, he was a youth team player. Hundred percent. Well, sure. What, what do you say? What, what do you say to Cal? Or do you let him make his own decisions? Nah. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen. Obviously, I've still got a bit of part of me that still can get drawn out at times, you know. And um, I let people know their place, you know. Yeah. Of course, like, you know what it's like, man. You you do well. Everybody's your best friend. If the shit was to crash today you wouldn't see them people again. But he's very, very smart anyway and sharp, yeah. so he knows, you know. We keep our circle as tight as we can, you know, I would say. Yeah, man. Um, thanks for coming on. Like, thanks for sharing. And for all the up-and-coming agents out there, there's your model from South London. Thank you, man. There's your camera there, mate. <laughs> Thank you, man. Listen, keep winning, everyone, man, and hope everybody stays safe. And if I can inspire you today with this conversation, I've done my job. Peace. Cheers, Brad. Thanks. Love my brother. Thanks, man.